All right, thanks for watching. And it's getting hot in here because we'll solve the heat equation because today we will finally solve the heat equation. And the cool thing is I will give you a direct method that doesn't involve any guessing whatsoever. And in order to do that, we'll have to use the Fourier transform. More precisely, we will use the Fourier transform with respect to X. So you have kappa T, what this is, is just the integral of u with respect to x, so u x t, and then e i kappa x dx. So in other words, you fix t and you integrate with respect to x. And the reason is, then we'll have a nice first order ODE with uh, u hat. Now, remember the steps from the Laplace transform video. So the first thing you have to do here is you have to take the Fourier transform. So take the hat or take Fourier. Then what you get is ut hat is d ux x hat. And well, the d is just a constant, so it comes out, and you're left with ut hat equals d ux x hat. And the next step is simply to solve for u hat. And for this, we need to use our miracle. Once again, recall our miracle, namely that the Fourier transform turns differentiation into multiplication. So f prime hat is minus i kappa f hat. And now, because we're using the Fourier transform with respect to x, we can actually use the miracle for the right-hand side because it's a derivative with respect to x. And so, u x x hat, by the miracle. So if you apply it once, you get minus i kappa u x hat. Right? This is like f double prime hat. And then you can use the miracle again okay? and get minus i kappa times minus i kappa u hat. And then, well, here you get kappa squared, minus one squared is one, i squared is minus one, so in the end, you get minus kappa squared u hat. Maybe let me write it here, minus kappa squared u hat. Very good. That was for the right-hand side. Now, for the left-hand side, it's slightly trickier because here we're taking the derivative with respect to t, but the idea is, since t is constant with respect to x, we can just take the derivative out. So fact, if you take ut hat, that's the same thing as d over dt u hat. So like taking the derivative of the Fourier transform. And why is that true? Simply using the definition, so ut hat, by definition, that is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of ut, and then uh, ei kappa x, dx. But you see, this ei kappa x doesn't depend on t at all. So this is the same thing as taking the t derivative, of u e i kappa x dx. And you see, the nice thing is this t derivative, it just comes out because we're integrating with respect to x and all the functions are nice enough. Technically, the dominated convergence theorem and becomes d over dt and then that integral of u x t 
di kappa x dx. And this is precisely the same thing as the t derivative of the Fourier transform. So d over d t u f. But intuitively, it's because once again, t is like a constant with respect to x, so the whole t derivative comes out. Okay, and now let's see what happens when we use those two facts to plug into the equation. And so, remember what we have, we have ut hat is duxx hat. Well, ut hat was just a t derivative. So if you had from kappa t, and then here we use our miracle, so minus d kappa squared, u hat kappa t. But you see, this is just a first order ODE if you ignore the kappa. Because if you think about it, this is very similar to the ODE y prime equals ay. So you see, derivative of u hat equals something times u hat, whose solution is c e to the a t. It's very delicious because it's eat. And using this, we can actually solve for u hat. For u hat. Because now, what we get is u hat kappa t is constant, but constant with respect to t, so a function of kappa, and then e to the minus, this is your a, d kappa squared t. So once again, to recap, this is u hat prime equals minus d kappa squared u hat, so the solution is c e to the minus d kappa squared t, but c doesn't depend on t, so it's a function of kappa. However, we can go a little bit further and solve for c, because one thing we haven't used yet is the initial condition. So let's plug in t equals zero. Then what we get is u hat kappa zero is c kappa e of minus d kappa squared zero. But this just becomes one, and then we get c kappa. And therefore, c is just the Fourier transform at zero. But if you want, we can calculate this explicitly using the definition because that is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of u of x zero e i kappa x dx but remember one thing we haven't used yet is the initial condition so that becomes the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x, ei kappa x dx. But notice, this is none other than the Fourier transform of f. So f hat of kappa. Which is very cool because in fact now we have solved for u hat in terms of our initial data. Because what we found so far, once again, you have kappa t is c kappa e of minus d kappa squared t, but c of kappa was f hat. And so now we get u hat kappa t is f hat of kappa e minus d kappa squared now, let's backtrack a little bit to see where to go next. If you remember the Laplace transform example from the previous video, right now we have arrived at the step 
where we solve for L of Y, which let's say was 4S minus 11 over S squared minus 5S plus 6. And remember, the next step was to recognize the right-hand side as a Laplace transform. And here we want to do the same thing. In other words, can we recognize this as a Fourier transform? So really, the big question we want to answer next so that would be kind of step two. Can we write the right-hand side as a Fourier transform? So can we write F hat of kappa E minus D kappa squared T as the Fourier transform of some function? So maybe g hat of kappa t for some g. Some g. And let me explain why that answers the question. Because suppose the answer is yes. So suppose yes. In other words, we can write this as g hat of kappa t, then all we need to do is compare because then if u hat is g hat for this mystery function, then u would be g. And by assumption here we found g, so then we would be done. And this again, by comparison with what we did by the Laplace transform, because suppose L of Y was, again, 4S minus 11 over S squared minus 5S plus 6. Suppose this were L of, I think, 3E to the 2T plus E to the 3T. So that would be our function G. Then Y would be this mystery function G which would be 3e to the 2t plus e to the 3t. So once again, if we find this g, we are done. However, as of now, we don't know what g is, and to find this, we need the concept of convolution. So, little cliffhanger here. We will first cover what convolution is, and then in a future video, we will use that to solve the heat equation. So to be continued. All right, if you like this and wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.